You know, I think that if you care about someone and you got a little love in your heart, there ain't nothing you can't get through together. You know what I'm saying? Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 friendship moments on Ted Lasso. No, don't be. It's good. You helped this panda become a lion. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> for this list, we're looking at the warmest and fuzziest displays of camaraderie from the hit sports dramedy. We'll be discussing seasons one and two, so consider this your official spoiler warning. Let us know in the comments below what your favorite lasso friendship moment is. Number 10, Leslie Higgins counsels Keeley Jones. If there's something everyone should do, it's appreciate Higgins more. I'm happy to be on the list. After Keeley gets an amazing career opportunity, she soon realizes that means the end of her time doing PR for AFC Richmond or working with Rebecca anymore. Unfortunately, no one she normally goes to for advice is available. Enter Leslie Higgins, who ends up comforting Keeley with some off-the-cuff guidance. I don't want to appear like I'm not grateful for the amazing opportunity she's given me here. Keely, a good mentor hopes you will move on. A great mentor knows you will. It's a little bit bittersweet seeing Keely leave the club. After all, Rebecca offering her a job in the first place was a great building block to their bond. We were never worried that Keely and Rebecca's beautiful relationship would suffer with the change, but we weren't prepared for how hard we'd cry at this conversation between the two boss besties. A bit of advice for being a boss. Hire your best friend. <laughs> Number nine, the Diamond Dogs. All right, Diamond Dogs, as canines, we are supposed to lack opposable digits, but right now I'm gonna ask you thumbs up or thumbs down. Ted Lasso consistently tackles complex topics head on, whether it's mental health or even masculinity. I must say that this is lovely. Yeah, ever since I was little, I always used to dream about sitting down with a bunch of mates talking about the complex dynamics between men and women. The coach's office becomes an inner sanctum for Ted, Coach Beard, Nate, and Higgins to discuss any number of issues on someone's mind. Like when Ted confides about his mixed feelings following a one-night stand with Flo. Tell you what, I gotta get y'all some satin jackets made with Ted Lasso's personal dilemma squad embroidered on the back there. Uh, ooh, that's clunky, man. There's gotta be something better here. Their helpful advice births the Diamond Dogs named after the David Bowie album. Their Dilemma Squad has become a recurring fixture of the series. The Diamond Dogs have struck again. <laughs> Though the sanctity of keeping things confidential gets broken in season two, this gang gives new meaning to the term man's best friend. <laughs> yeah, I was howling. Number eight, Higgins Christmas Dinner. As a gesture of goodwill on Christmas day, AFC Richmond's Director of Communications, Leslie Higgins, opens up his house to the teammates who cannot return home for the holidays. Expecting a small turnout, Higgins is understandably shocked when so many of the expatriate players decide to attend. You've become quite popular, Leslie. This is by far the most people we've ever had. Merry Christmas! Hey, welcome, welcome, guys. Well, at least we've got plenty of food and drink. During the dinner, they share and feast on foods and homemade dishes from their own cultures in a sweet and lovely display of kindness. It was truly an honor to have you with us to share our traditions and help make a few new ones. <laughs> to the family we're born with and to the family we make along the way. And most importantly, to Richmond! <laughs> The dinner is capped off with a surprise street performance by Rebecca and Ted, which caps off the magical Christmas celebration. The soul's coming down, I'm watching it Number seven, the entire club shows up for Rebecca Welton's dad's funeral. So we're all going to his funeral as a team. So that means ties, shirts, and no trainers. What? During one of the most heart-tugging storylines of season two, Rebecca learns that her father has passed away. In an act of empathy, the entire AFC Richmond team attends the funeral to not only pay their respects, but to also support their grieving friend. How many of them came? All of them. And none of them are wearing trainers. Mm, that's how much they care about you. 
at the service, they continue to show their solidarity by singing along with Rebecca during her eulogy using Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up. Even Roy Kent gets in on the action. It's a bittersweet scene that proves as long as you are part of the Richmond team, you are never alone. Number six, Roy Kent gives Rebecca dating advice. After attending a double date with Keely and Roy, Rebecca feels as if she's in a good place in her love life. Oh, terrific. Who do you support? Well, I bounce back and forward between United and City, whichever club's winning, typically. I love it. Sounds like it. However, thanks to Roy's blunt honesty, she gets a much needed wake up call. The retired footballer tells her straight up that her date is fine, but nothing special, and that she deserves someone who makes her feel electric. You deserve someone who makes you feel like you've been struck by fing lightning. Don't you dare settle for fine. It's a startling and defining moment for Rebecca that changes the trajectory of her season two storyline. His advice might not have been what she wanted, but it's definitely what she needed. I need to be brave enough to let someone wonderful love me without fear of being hurt and without fear of being safe. Number five, the protest. After booking a photo shoot for AFC's lead sponsor, Dubai Air, Sam is conflicted when he learns their parent company is causing mass environmental destruction to his home in Nigeria. Ultimately, he decides that he no longer wants to support the corporation and pulls out of his ad contract. I can't be the face of one of their subsidiaries. Hell yeah. Look, Keely, I'm really sorry. I know how hard you worked for this. It's okay. Of course you don't have to do it, Sam. We'll take care of it. He takes it a step further by covering their logo on his uniform right before a big game. In an act of solidarity, the entire team follows suit. What do you think you're doing? Retainment man. Go wear the same kit. Their statement is heard loud and clear. And soon after, the team has a new, less problematic sponsor. It's a moving moment that proves their strength in numbers. I just hope the rest of the team is not upset with me. Hey, doing the right thing is never the wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> Number four, Ted Lasso forgives Rebecca. What started off as a means of sabotage blossomed into a genuine friendship. So when Rebecca has to fess up to her scheming, the stakes are high. I mean, what would be the point of telling Ted now? It doesn't change anything. It will change how I feel about you. As an act of revenge against her ex-husband, the owner of Richmond hired Ted to coach the football or soccer team, if you prefer, with the hope that he would fail. Well, the plan backfired and the team got stronger. More importantly, she and Ted formed a bond. All you good people just trying to make a difference. Ted, I'm so sorry. Having to own up to her evil plan, Rebecca spills the tea and asks for his forgiveness, which she also has to do with Higgins after he leaves his job. I wanted to apologize to you for treating you so poorly and forcing you to be an accomplice in my moronically childish scheme. I am truly sorry, Higgins. It wasn't much of a surprise that the tender-hearted Ted would forgive and forget, but it's still sweet nonetheless. I forgive you. You would? Why? Divorce is hard. And it doesn't matter if you're the one leaving or if you're the one who got left. Number three, the charity ball. Displays of women supporting women are a crucial part of storytelling. And the friendship between Keely and Rebecca is one of the best examples of this in recent memory. It made me think of you. It's strong and a bit prickly. Mm. Oh. You know, I've decided to not be scared of you anymore. I didn't know you were. Before Rebecca and Keely really know each other, the former is riddled by nerves when she arrives on the red carpet at her charity gala. Taking note of this, Keely gives her some pointers on how to pose and even cheers her on from the sidelines. Just put one foot in front of the other, yeah? And if you put your hand on your hip, you make like a claw shape. It's the most flattering. This helps her to break through the walls Rebecca's put up a little bit and later champions Keely to think more of herself in her relationship. Simple, rich, fit. What about accountable? What do you mean? Well, I mean, everyone makes mistakes, but 
I was married to a man for 12 years who never once took responsibility for any single one of them. The night is capped off with a rickshaw ride that we definitely would have liked an invite to. Their friendship continues to shine from this point on. I love you. I love you too. Number two, Roy and Jamie Tart's hug. Here's something we never thought we'd see happen. Over the course of two seasons, arch rivals Jamie Tart and Roy Kent's hatred for one another grew stronger and stronger with every episode. Just when it seemed that the two would never see eye to eye, this sweet and tender moment changed their feud for good. After Jamie's father berates his son, the embarrassed footballer knocks him out. Twaddling about with a bunch of amateurs! No offense, no offense! <laughs> huh? Don't turn your back on me, you pussy! Oh! Oh! Ah! Seeing the pain the situation has caused his former teammate, Roy walks over and gives him a warm hug. Watch out now. Take it's a surprising and touching breakthrough, and hopefully the first of many that the two frenemies will share. I do this. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. AFC Richmond roots for Sam Obasanya's romantic life. When he looks at the three dots in banter, the rest of his teammates are just as invested as Sam. Guys, guys, three dots, three dots, three dots. <laughs> Isaac McAdoo cuts Sam's hair for his big date. The entire AFC Richmond team sits and watches in awe as Sam gets his hair cut by Isaac. Guys, I believe <laughs> this could be something very special. Aww. So do we all just stand here? Oh, oh my God. God! Ted and Rebecca hug it out. Ted offers Rebecca support at the gala when she sees her ex. You want to hop on this thing? Mm -hmm. Get the heck out of Dodge. Nathan Shelley's promotion. In the finale of season one, Ted promotes Nate from kit manager to assistant coach. You know my name? Well, I had to spell it correctly for your contract. Nate, dog, you haven't been fired. It's worse. You've been promoted. <laughs> Sacrifices. Each player sacrifices a prized item in order to rid the spirits from their treatment room. And that was the last time I saw him, because he'd uh, passed away by the time I got back for Christmas. So that is why uh, Blanky means so much to me. Did you just say Blanky? No, I said Blanket. Conversation over. Sam, go. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the panic attack. Ted, it's okay. It's okay. Try to breathe. I can't, I can't, I can't, I don't know what's going on. In one of the most talked about scenes of season one, a night on the town takes a serious turn. While watching Rebecca perform karaoke, Ted begins to suddenly feel a wave of anxiety come over him. Displaying symptoms of dizziness, shortness of breath, and a racing heart, it becomes clear that he's experiencing a panic attack. Rebecca eventually finds him and walks him through it by offering him empathy and comfort. I'm going crazy. <laughs> no more than anyone else. The show received lots of praise for its realistic and authentic portrayal. It's a standout moment that sticks in the minds of fans even into season two and cements Rebecca and Ted's bond. Oh, it was nothing, Ted. No, no, it was something. You got a coupon for life, young lady. Yeah, I got your back. Think of me as your own personal metaphorical St. Bernard. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.